Okay, so let's talk about garbage collector now. It is very interesting to note that garbage collector in Java is actually quite similar in concept to garbage collector in a real time scenario. Right? So let's try and correlate this here. I'll just take an example and we will discuss how garbage collection happens in a day to day life real time. Right? How, how do you get rid of garbage from your house? So basically you get a lot of items to your house every day groceries and a lot of other stuff which you need to use at home right and at the same time there is a lot of stuff which you just need to get rid of right and you need to throw away so what is this called this unused items is nothing but garbage for you right and you need to get rid of this garbage how do you actually get rid of this garbage what you do is you put the garbage in the garbage bags right and uh, let's say that uh, once every week the garbage van comes and picks up all the garbage from your house right so the garbage guy doesn't really come into your house and ask you for the garbage and take the garbage and go so there is a place in outside your house somewhere where you place all the garbage bags and the garbage guy simply comes and picks up the garbage from that location that place where you put the garbage and clears the garbage off so in this way you get rid of all the garbage from your house every week right so in a similar manner if you try to correlate this to java a garbage is nothing but unused object so here we said that garbage is nothing but unused items right and in java terms garbage is nothing but unused object so let's say for example that i've used some object to get some uh, business logic or functionality right and uh, later on I don't need it and I simply left it so this is nothing but garbage for me because this object is simply lying there around in the heap which nobody is using right so it's of no use to anyone so it's nothing but garbage for me and I need to get rid of that and how do I get rid of that using the garbage van and the garbage van in java is nothing but a garbage collector so the jvm actually implements the garbage collection which the garbage collector is actually going to clear up all the garbage in other in, in other words the garbage collector is going to get rid of, of all the unused objects from your heap so for that reason heap is also called a garbage collectible heap right and why do we actually need to get rid of these objects from the heap so heap is nothing but memory right and the more objects you put on the heap you are taking more space on the heap right you are taking more space on the memory so if you do not clear up all these unused objects what's going to happen is you keep adding more and more objects which takes more and more space on your memory and ultimately you are going to go out of space and you're going to get a big out of memory error right? and even though you don't come to that point you will get a lot of performance issues if you do not clear up all the unused memory and make space available for new objects in time right so that's the overall broad concept of garbage collection in java right? so we have seen what a garbage collection is so garbage collection is nothing but clearing of all the unused objects from the heap right so we know that garbage collector is the one which clears off all these objects from the heap but when does it do it so when we talked about uh, the garbage van we said that once every week the garbage van comes and picks up the garbage at a particular time right but what about garbage collector when does it come and pick up all the unused objects and freeze up the space so it it actually depends on the server implementation we don't have anything in the spec which says that it has to run at so and so time and stuff like that but there are a lot of uh, algorithms which the garbage collector uses so we won't be going into the details of 
those algorithms here right uh, but it the implementation is really server specific right so we cannot guarantee anything that it will be run every 5 minutes or every 1 hour or every day or anything like that but can we from our program force garbage collector to be run can we force the garbage collector no but we can always make a request to the garbage collector so when we call this method gc method on runtime or system so th these are static methods so when we say runtime dot gc or system dot gc we are giving a we are actually making a request to the garbage collector asking it to run so there's no way we can command the garbage collector to run we can only make a request and it's up to the garbage collector whether or not it wants to run or not right so we can just make the request and hope that the garbage collector runs as soon as possible when we make the request right so what is the cleanup uh, option you have when the garbage collector is run so basically let's um, say that uh, you you have a lot of you you've created some objects in in your program right and uh, it's time for garbage collection and you have not yet closed all your connections or cleared up some of the things so where can you do that you can do that in the finalize method so in your class you can write a finalize method where you can put all your clean up activity right and before uh, freeing ga garbage collecting that particular object the garbage collector will run the finalize method on that particular object so if there any kind of clean up you need to do you need to do it in the finalize method so we saw that earlier in the try catch finally you do the clean up in the finally because even though there is an error or there was no exception raised the finally block would have compulsory been called so you can do the clean up there in a similar manner just b before the object is garbage collected the finalize method will be called for sure so this is the place where you can perform your clean up code right before garbage collecting the object okay now so we we've seen that the garbage collector is responsible for clearing up all the unused objects we also know that now we can request the garbage collector to run so that it clears up the memory but from my programming perspective how can i make a particular object eligible for garbage collection right we know that it garbage collector collects all the unused objects so how can i make my particular object unused if i want the garbage collector to be run so there are different mechanisms through which it can take the unused objects so the three things listed out here is one reassign reference variable set a null value to and three islands of isolation so let's discuss these three here okay so first thing is reassigning a reference so let's say for example that there is a class a and i created an object for a so this is my object for a which is a1 which is nothing but a1 okay now what i do is i reassign a the reference a which was earlier pointing to a1 so this was earlier a was earlier pointing to a1 which is nothing but this object on the heap now i simply assign the a to a2 which is nothing but another object let's assume that this a2 object was already created earlier right and i simply assign this a to a2 now so at this point of time a was pointing to a1 earlier but now it's pointing to a2 so what is pointing to a1 nothing actually so nothing on the stack is actually pointing to a1 so that means it doesn't have any active reference a1 so this object a1 is now eligible for garbage collection right so 
how do you say whether a particular object on the heap is active or not so as long as a particular object on the heap has a reference variable in the stack right it is active so as long as there is an a reference in the stack for that particular heap that object can be reached through any means right and it is active if not it may not be active right and it will be eligible for garbage collection so in this case here a1 is eligible for garbage collection right so this is one method through which you can make an object eligible for garbage collection reassigning the reference to some other object number 2 so here what we can do is one more thing assign that reference to null so this is kind of similar to reassigning the reference but we are not reassigning the reference to another object here but we are simply reassigning that reference to null so this is the same case again a1 was pointing to a was pointing to a1 earlier but now since i have assigned it to null there is no active reference to a1 now so nobody can reach a1 now right so this is again eligible for garbage collection number 3 islands of isolation <coughs> this is actually interesting so let's say that there are three objects okay and uh, i can reach object a from object b i can reach object b from object c and i can reach object c from object a so i i have kind of references between these objects but ultimately there is no active reference to any of these three objects a b or c in the stack right so in that case even though there are references internally it's nothing but a circular reference which lands to nowhere right so that's the reason this is called islands of isolation so this is an island which is created here but it is an isolated island you cannot reach that island from anywhere outside the heap right in real terms from the stack references so this is one more good contender for garbage collection right so these are the different ways through which you can explicitly mark your objects eligible for garbage collection okay so this uh, something brief about uh, garbage collection right